The Half-Life timeline went through so many devastating events that spanned across multiple worlds and dimensions. Some of these did occur before the disaster on May 16th on planet Earth, but the Black Mesa incident did become a catalyst for so many major devastating moments. Each one changed humanity and the other species on Earth forever. At face value, the Black Mesa incident was simply a catastrophic accident that changed humanity in ways that could never be undone, but there is so much more to this story. What really happened on May 16th in an unspecified year in the early 2000s? Was the Black Mesa incident an accident or a perfectly crafted plan? And who gained the most from the destruction of Black Mesa? And ultimately, the fall of humanity. Here, we explore and deep dive into the events that led up to May 16th, the moments during, and ultimately, what happened in front of and behind the scenes of the Black Mesa incident. The main event occurred on May 16th of an unspecified year in the early 2000s, but this disaster was the result of many smaller acts within different factions months and years before. These main factions were the personnel of the Black Mesa facility, the Hazardous Environment Combat Unit, Black Ops, the G-Man and his employers, the Nylanth and his servants, and the mysterious Race X. But how did each of these arrive at Black Mesa to play their part, and what did they want? The start of this disaster actually began many years before over in the New Mexico desert at the Black Mesa Research Facility. During this period, one of the teams here were given the task to develop and explore in the field of teleportation. Through research and hard work, this small, secret team accidentally discovered another world, or should I say a border world, called Zen. This was groundbreaking, an extra-dimensional realm with different laws of physics, flora and fauna. A new world full of possibilities and research that could be used to enhance humanity's understanding of the universe as they knew it. As time passed, survey teams were sent to Zen to explore this vast group of floating islands in a void of space. They learned that this place existed between dimensions and acted almost as a pathway from one world to another. None of the life here actually came from Zen, they had crossed over from their own worlds and simply stayed. A discovery of this magnitude was a first for humanity and as a top secret research facility. Only a select few were given clearance to this information. Zen itself was interesting, and as the survey teams ventured across it and set up small camps, they brought back artifacts, flora and fauna to study in Black Mesa. While the study of these was incredibly interesting, another team found value in another type of Zenian artifact. The vast floating islands of Zen were home to dangerous, aggressive creatures, but they also contained crystals. These crystals varied in size and colour, and inside, they contained an energy source humanity had never come across before. Upon acquisition of some of these crystals, a small team analysed them and theorised that they contained an exotic energy that could quite possibly help them in the development of teleportation technology. The issue they had was that they did not have the technology or equipment to fully examine them. To push forward with their research, Dr. Rosenberg drafted a blueprint for a giant machine that could give them the information they needed from each Xenian crystal sample. This machine, the anti-mass spectrometer, was constructed in Sector C of Black Mesa in Test Lab C-33A. Its purpose and function was to scan the crystals with oscillating electromagnetic fields and beams of high-energy plasma. This in turn would agitate the exotic matter within the crystals to measure the currents of displacement energy. Energy that the scientists believed would help them progress with teleportation technology. 
they just had to find a crystal that gave them the results they wanted. So, a team was formed, the Anomalous Materials team, and they scanned the Xenian crystals sourced by the Zen Survey team. This technology and research was extremely dangerous, and as a result, safety parameters were put in place to protect the team. The most prominent feature was that the power of the anti-mass spectrometer was to never go above 90%, otherwise there was a chance the beams could strike out in any direction or even just blow up the machine. The discovery of Zen, its crystals, and the creation of the anti-mass spectrometer were essential pieces of the puzzle to the eventual disaster. However, more was happening behind the scenes in secret. Was the discovery of Zen an accident, or were the scientists led there from a secret force? And whose idea was it to study the crystals? While humanity stumbled around the floating islands of Zen like children, the Nylanth watched them from afar. This creature, for all intents and purposes, was the ruler of this land by force. It had enslaved the sentient population and created an army. The Nylanth wanted to leave Zen eventually, as it had been hunted and severely injured by another force. It needed a safe haven, and Earth appeared to be just that. It just had to wait for the correct moment to strike. Across Earth, within important locations and facilities, a man, or what appeared to be a man, appeared frequently. Known only as the G-Man or Government Man to others, this person triggered events and pushed the pieces of the puzzle together to start the Resonance Cascade. His appearance could have simply been a coincidence in the events leading up to May 16th, or he could have known exactly what was going to happen. It is unknown if he was human or something else. His glowing eyes and odd speech patterns suggest he may have only imitated a human in order to fit in with the species, but that is only a theory, and there are many of them, the Shu Ulithoi being the most popular. The G-Man is now known to be a being of great power, whether through natural ability or from a device in his briefcase. Although labelled a powerful entity, he still worked for a higher, unknown power only labelled as his employers. During this period of time of humanity's discovery of Zen and teleportation, the G-Man became a part of the United States government or managed to acquire high-level clearance and security access to the top secret sites and facilities across the country. His actions during this period would suggest he was the puppet master pulling the strings of all of the events that would occur, but for what goal? Now entering May, while Black Mesa continued their exploration and experimentation of Zen and the Crystals, out in the Santiago military base in Arizona, a young Marine, Corporal Adrian Shepard, was placed at the top of the advanced training list. This action had been committed by someone, but as of now, no one knows who placed him there. Someone wanted him to be trained fast for a very specific mission. On May the 3rd, Adrian heard word of a strange government-looking man wandering the base. This was only a rumour at this point, but by May 7th, Adrian saw the man for himself. The interesting part about this was that the man appeared to watch him from afar at various points throughout the day. Considering Adrian had mysteriously been placed at the top of the advanced training list, and he was being watched by this high-ranking official, it could suggest highly that this was the man who had pushed him up, the G-Man. On May the 9th, Adrian and the rest of the Marines conducted their regular tiring drills. The appearance of the G-Man had sparked rumour of an upcoming mission, and this was confirmed to the Marines shortly after. They were told that they were being trained for a mission, and that they had just one week to become experts at indoor strategic combat. This was exactly one week before the Black Mesa incident. The most interesting part about this was that the training they were receiving was not typically taught at a boot camp. This moment signified that the event to come was planned, 
They had begun training for a devastating freak accident that had not happened yet. Therefore, the G-Man had not only arrived at Santiago and pulled strings to push Adrian up the advanced training list, but his arrival also suggested that he had hired a team with specific training for an event that was yet to occur. But why did they need to be a Black Mesa when disaster struck? On May 11th, over in the Black Mesa Research Facility, a new crystal sample, GG-3883, was delivered to the facility by hand. Interestingly enough, this was different as it was reportedly brought in by the government man. As usual, before a crystal could be placed into the anti-mass spectrometer for deep analysis, it was given to a research associate to see if it was a viable candidate. Alongside the sample, Dr. Colette Green was given a memo that stated that the supervision team were particularly interested in this newly acquired mineral sample. This appeared to be pretty important in comparison to some of the other samples she had looked at. Dr. Green reported that sample GG-3883 was not only the largest sample she had seen, but it was also the purest they had received by far. It made sense why the sample was so important. Despite the fact that the Anomalous Materials team already had a crystal scheduled for their next scan, they were told that they had to replace it and push the priority of this new one. So, sample EP-0021 was replaced with sample GG-3883 for the upcoming scan on May 16th. This order of replacement violated the standard anomalous materials handling protocol, but at this point, the administrator of the facility, Dr. Wallace Breen, had got involved, and as their boss, the team could not really say no. Over the next few days, the Marines at Santiago heard rumors of what their mission actually was, and the name Black Mesa Research Facility appeared frequently. A top-secret research facility did not sound too exciting to the Marines, but this is where they would be going. On May 15th, the day before the event, they were told to prepare to leave at any moment. They were just waiting for it to happen. However, the Marines were not told what it was. All of these smaller events were important to the lead-up of the Black Mesa incident. The border world of Zen had been discovered, and with it, the examination of Zenian crystals and the attention of Zen's ruler, the Nylanth. A large, pure sample had been brought into Black Mesa by the G-Man for analysis with the anti-mass spectrometer. A highly trained military team was on standby for an event that had not happened yet, and the administrator of Black Mesa showed a strong interest in this sample, pushing him to put pressure on his team, even if it meant going outside of the standard safety protocols. Alongside the majority of these events, the G-Man was there, putting them in place, but what did he and his employers plan to gain from what was to come? A regular experiment at the Black Mesa Research Facility in Sector C was stressful, yet the team had been pushed even more this time after they had been given a crystal sample that forced them to stretch not only their standard testing parameters, but also their health and safety. In the early hours of May 16th, the scientists believed that this day would be just another regular day. Maybe a little more stressful, but still a normal day of testing. As the team set up, they were given instructions directly from their administrator. He wanted conclusive results from this sample, and to do this, they had to further adapt their standard parameters. This crystal sample, GG-3883, was much larger and pure than a regular sample, and for it to work within the anti-mass spectrometer, the team had to adjust how they used the machine. The anti-mass spectrometer had a power resolution safety buffer of 90%. This normally allowed them to generate enough energy to acquire the results they desired. With a sample of a much greater size, they had to adjust. For this sample, 
the team increased the power resolution to 105%. Not only did one of the lead scientists, Dr. Eli Vance, object to this violation of protocol with the safety of his team in mind, but so did the creator of the machine, Dr. Rosenberg. Despite their objections, they were ordered to continue with this course of action by the administrator. Something was off about this whole situation and what made it even more unsettling was that the G-Man was spotted wandering the halls and speaking to some of the scientists. For an experiment that would have usually been so normal, why was a government man there? The team continued to scramble to get everything in order, but they soon found that the new allocated power required for the anti-mass spectrometer led to electrical issues and shortages across the rest of Black Mesa. As the hours went on, it was clear they were running behind. They were pushed back even more when their materials handler, Dr. Gordon Freeman, did not turn up on time. He had slept late and rushed his way in. This would have normally frustrated the team, but for this day, they took advantage of this extra time to continue setting up. All over Black Mesa, systems crashed and data was lost as the entire facility attempted to work alongside the power disruptions. Then, Gordon Freeman arrived. Although the Anomalous Materials team had been given all of this extra time, the eventual arrival of Dr. Freeman meant that they had to push on with this sample analysis. Shortly after his arrival, Gordon entered the test chamber and under the instructions of the team in the control room, he activated the beams of the anti-mass spectrometer. Following whatever remained of their protocol that had not been adapted, below the machine, Dr. Cross placed the crystal sample into the delivery lift in preparation for it to be moved into the chamber above. As the beams continued to power up, the G-Man contacted Dr. Vance, a strong objector to this experiment, and he told him something odd. Prepare for unforeseen consequences. Eli had been suspicious of this experiment and worried of the dangers it could bring. This statement only solidified his fears. Something could go extremely wrong and he knew something was off but his team was under so much pressure from their administrator and so he decided not to do anything and just continued on with his role. The anti-mass spectrometer eventually reached the power level of 105% and was ready for the next stage in this experiment. In the control room, one of the team noticed a small discrepancy in the readings. This again was another red flag that something was wrong, but once again, this concern was ignored. There had been so many warning signs on this day for many of the team, but the looming pressures of the administrator had pushed them out of their comfort zone. The arrival of the G-Man who wandered the halls also suggested he had some sort of hold over the administrator. He had been the one to deliver the crystal sample after all. Inside of the chamber, Dr. Freeman was asked to push the crystal sample into the beam of the anti-mass spectrometer. This action changed everything. Almost instantly, the crystal reacted violently to the energy of the high plasma beams of the anti-mass spectrometer. As it cracked, Xenian crystal sample GG-3883 flooded the test chamber with the exotic energy the anomalous materials team had sought to analyze inside of it. This violent burst of energy ripped open a tear in space between planet Earth and the border world of Zen. Some of the team had worried about the extremely small chance a resonance cascade would occur, and it had. So many small factors had led to this moment, each one perfect perfectly orchestrated and monitored from afar by the mysterious force of the G-Man and his employers. A lot of work had gone into this, but there was still more to do. 
The resonance cascade had connected Earth to Zen, and this is the moment the Nyland had waited for. With this rare opportunity, it ordered its servants to travel through the rift and claim the planet for it, alongside the standard Vortigaunt and Grunt under the control of the Nyland. The wildlife and plant life of Zen also found themselves teleported into Black Mesa. Scared and unaware of their surroundings, they attacked on sight. The once prosperous halls of Black Mesa that allowed the great minds here to explore the various different branches of science fell into chaos as the Xenian invaders attacked anything they saw. The scientists, for the most part, had no combat experience and were unable to defend themselves. However, there was one person that appeared to thrive in this environment, Dr. Gordon Freeman. The following hours led to mass casualties across the facility, and it appeared his plan had been successful so far. There were still factors at play, so the G-Man watched from afar as some members of Black Mesa started their journey through the facility. He made his way to the daughter of Eli Vance, Alex, and took her out of harm's way. He also watched over Dr. Gordon Freeman, Barney Calhoun, Gina Cross and Colette Green. These people had important roles to play in how this disaster played out, and he had to be ready just in case they changed the course of the plan. Gordon and Barney made their way through the facility separately in an attempt to seek out help for those below, as Gina Cross and Colette Green managed to send out a distress call. This call was heard by the units at the Santiago military base. This was what they had been waiting for and trained for a whole week before it had even occurred. It had happened, and just as quickly as the call had been received they boarded Ospreys and began their journey to the facility. They would not be told what their orders were until they arrived. Eventually, the HECU made it to the New Mexico desert, and upon arrival, they received heavy resistance from Xenian forces, even to the point in which at least two of their Ospreys were shot down. For those who survived and arrived at the landing zone, they were finally given their orders. Silence any witness to this disaster. At this point, Black Mesa was essentially overrun by Xenian forces, so everyone inside was a witness, and therefore a target. The various people across Black Mesa attempted to reverse the resonance cascade, but their attempts failed. A satellite was even launched to close the rift, but the Nylanth was an extremely powerful force and it kept it open. From afar, the G-Man watched as Gordon became a strong force against the antagonists of Black Mesa. He not only took out the headcrabs, barnacles, vortigaunt, and various other alien forces, but he also took out the marines who at first underestimated the scientist. Within the Lambda Complex, the team there, shortly joined later by Gordon Freeman, determined that they would have to close the rift and stop the resonance cascade from the other side, in Zen. The HECU soon discovered that this was a losing battle and decided to pull out. During this moment, Adrian Shepard woke up. He had been in one of the Ospreys that had fallen in this chaos, completely unaware of what his orders were or what had happened here. He ventured through Black Mesa. Corporal Adrian Shepard, just like Gordon, showed the incredible ability to survive in an impossible situation. It is likely the G-Man knew he would perform well here. He was very likely the person who had pushed him to the top of the advanced training list to be here. This situation was getting out of hand, and another team was sent in to not only clean up the ever-growing Black Mesa incident, but also the original cleanup crew who had been sent in but had failed. These Black Ops were deadly and attempted to kill everything in sight. It was clear Black Mesa was unsalvageable, and there was only one way to clean up this mess, a thermonuclear device. 
To escape this mess, Adrian travelled across Black Mesa in search of the evacuation point. However, upon arrival, the G-Man got in his way. He locked the hangar doors Adrian needed to pass through to board the Osprey. The G-Man had other plans for him and he would not be able to escape this disaster so easily. Now, Gordon had noticed the G-Man watching him from afar during his path through Black Mesa, but he did not know why. He was unaware that he was a weapon, someone needed to take down the Nylanth, and Gordon was just that. From the Lambda Complex, Gordon entered a portal to Zen and as he wandered the floating islands and sought out whatever was holding the rift open, he reached the portal to the Nylanth's chamber. The key players at this point were exactly where they needed to be. The Nylanth was on Zen with Gordon. The G-Man was on Earth in the Black Mesa facility with Adrian. The HECU had evacuated and the Black Ops silenced everything they saw and prepared to destroy the entire facility. Deep inside of Black Mesa, Adrian discovered a new race of creatures, known only as Race X. It appeared these had a similar plan to the Nylanth, to conquer Earth and take it for themselves. As of now, it is unknown if they were Xenian or had simply used Zen as a gateway to enter Earth from their planet, but Adrian fought his way through them. These played only a small role in this disaster and were likely an unavoidable side effect of a grander plan. Within a parking garage, Adrian came across the thermonuclear device that the Black Ops intended to use to destroy the entire facility. Sure enough, with his safety and the others around him in mind, Adrian took out the Black Ops who armed and guarded it, and then deactivated it. Despite Adrian's best intentions, the G-Man made his way to the bomb and rearmed it. A greater plan was in play, and this odd man appeared to be all over the facility at the exact moment he needed to do something. He was always there, always watching, always prepared to put the plan back on track when someone changed an important factor. Even deeper into Black Mesa, Adrian found himself in an old warehouse, but he was not alone. He discovered what the Race X creatures had been fighting for, a giant gene worm. This creature was used to terraform regions into habitable spots for Race X to live and thrive. The creature was giant and powerful, but Adrian was a strong warrior and with the help of Xenian based weaponry, he fought back the Gene Worm. The retreat of the Gene Worm brought forth a portal storm that knocked Adrian unconscious. As he woke up, he found himself in an osprey sitting before the G-Man. Adrian had shown strength and the survival skills he needed throughout this whole ordeal. This man had watched Adrian for weeks now and had pulled strings behind the scenes to get him into this very position. The G-Man explained that he needed Adrian to listen to him. He could not close his report until all of the loose ends had been tied up. He had many at this point, Adrian, Gordon, the Nylanth, the Black Ops, Race X and Black Mesa. As he spoke, the thermonuclear device activated and annihilated the facility and all within. This action took care of Black Mesa, the Black Ops and Race X loose ends. As for Adrian, he was also a witness, but he had adapted to survive in an almost unwinnable situation. So, the G-Man placed Adrian in a place where he could do no harm to others and no harm could come to him. Stasis. Adrian was vital in his plan to keep Race X at bay, as the other pieces of the plan played their parts. Over on Zen, Gordon finally reached the Nylanth, fought with it and killed it. The death of a creature of such power also ended with the eruption of a portal storm and with it, Gordon found himself teleported to a new location. He was still on Zen, but now he stood before the G-Man. The death of the Nylanth had stopped the Resonance Cascade, but unknown to Gordon, 
most of the scientists he had known back on Earth had fallen with Black Mesa. From the perspective of the G-Man, Gordon was his final loose end. Adrian was detained, the Nylanth and ruler of Zen was dead, the Black Ops would stay quiet about the events and Racex had fallen with Black Mesa. His report of this situation was almost complete. So many lives across worlds and dimensions were lost in this carefully orchestrated plan, but was it worth it? And what was it all for? The battle for Zen was one of the most important battles in this timeline up until this point, and changed everything going forward. Gordon was completely unaware that he had simply been used as a pawn by the G-Man to remove the Nylanth from its position of power so that the G-Man and his employers could simply take over. As he stood before Gordon Freeman, the G-Man explained that the Borderworld was now in their control thanks to him. With control of Zen, they had access to almost any world or dimension they wanted. However, what they needed this for is still unknown. He continued on to explain that he had recommended Gordon's services to his employers. They believed Gordon had limitless potential and he would be a great asset to them. From here, the G-Man gave Gordon the illusion of choice in this matter. Step into a green portal to be stored for a future war, or enter a fight he had no chance of winning. Gordon of course chose to enter the portal and upon doing so, tied up the final loose end of the Black Mesa incident. And finally, the G-Man could write up his report. All of these smaller pieces had come together, and with some manipulation and direct intervention in the events that occurred on May 16th, the G-Man and his employers had acquired the Borderworld of Zen for themselves. This long, complicated mission had been a success. There is always the chance that this disaster was completely random and could have been avoided, but with all of the moments that had occurred before and during the incident, as well as the appearance of the G-Man during many of the pivotal events, it is highly likely that the G-Man and his employers did orchestrate the Black Mesa incident. What came next may not have been the arrival of the Combine Empire, but that is a story for another day. Many people lost their lives on May 16th of an unspecified year in the early 2000s. From what was estimated to be hundreds of employees at just Black Mesa, only 10 of these were confirmed to have escaped or were discovered alive later. Walter Bennett, Wallace Breen, Barney Calhoun, Isaac Kleiner, Arnie Magnusson, Dr. Rosenberg, Dr. Simmons, Gordon Freeman, Alex Vance, and her father, Dr. Eli Vance. These were just the Black Mesa personnel casualties. Countless Zenian creatures, Race X, Black Ops, and HECU also perished. Countless lives were taken in the process to control a border world, but was it worth it? The Black Mesa Incident, the Catalyst, or the Resonance Cascade, was very likely a highly planned event orchestrated by the G-Man and his employers to take control of Zen. Despite all of the events that occurred following the Resonance Cascade, what is known is that these mysterious puppet masters appear to remain in control of Zen. But even now, we do not know what they used this border world's vast capabilities for. Maybe another story behind the scenes that we have not witnessed yet, or maybe they did not find a use there at all, which begs the question again. Was the acquisition of Zen worth all of the lives lost during the battle and the subsequent lives taken as a side effect of messing with the universe in such a grand scale? This quote was taken from Nylanth by Mark Laidlaw, a post on his blog which he believed was used for promotional purposes and really changes the way I at least viewed the events of May 16th. Teleportation is only the first of many new empowerments for humanity. 
Greater surprises await us as we begin to plumb the depths of the universe, finding in Zen the gateways to all the other worlds, for Zen is the way station, essential to all travels that take us out of this universe and into the next. Whoever controls Zen controls all the worlds, and the battle of Zen is just beginning. It will rage on Earth, it will rage on Zen, it will consume entire realities before it ends. Is that battle still active now, 20 years later? Are the Combine yet another puppet in a great plan for universal domination? Or is this just an outdated quote that no longer has relevance in the Half-Life timeline? Regardless, May 16th of an unspecified year in the early 2000s was one of the most important dates in human history. Sadly, a date that brought only chaos death, fear and tragedy to the human species for at least the next two decades to come. This is a little different to the types of videos I make. Normally, I base the videos in fact and lore, but May 16th was so much more than the Resonance Cascade. It was just a moment a plan came together. This is my interpretation of an analysis of the lore and the events leading up to the Resonance Cascade. It may have just been a freak accident, but there are too many coincidences for it not to have been. This video is mostly my opinion of the events, but it is all based in lore and the canon, basically. I know there will be comments about my using of the date of May 16th, as other dates have been used by the community. But this is the date that is most commonly used. We even celebrated the day a couple of weeks ago on Twitter. This was a tough one to write. I wanted this video to be just about the Black Mesa incident and the factors that made it happen, the key players and the aftermath and legacy. I found that I kept trying to tell the story of Gordon Freeman and the other people in the story. But again, this event is so much bigger than all of them. They were all pawns for the G-Man. At one point, it was an ongoing joke on this channel that I would describe the Resonance Cascade in almost every video, because it was a major part in the timeline, so why not just make a whole video on it? Anyway, I did skim over a few of the story details because I wanted to focus on just the Resonance Cascade and not the smaller actions that some of the characters did. I do have deeper dives into certain characters, I'm sure you'll find a topic that you're interested in if you look on the playlist. I have used the word likely a lot in the script because, again, this is more of a theory. A great theory, in my opinion, that makes sense to me, but it is still a theory. A lot of this information does come down to your thoughts on whether opposing force is canon. Adrian Shepard's diaries kind of cemented this video idea for me. You will also notice I did use a quote from Nylanth by Mark Laidlaw. It is a fascinating read and I do intend to cover it properly in the near future. That was everything I really wanted to cover, so please share it, please like it, uh, dislike it if you uh, disagreed with me. Um, any engagement is amazing. The algorithm is still acting a bit funky lately, so if you interact in any way, it would help amazingly. I would like to thank you guys for an amazing year so far. I make videos on Half-Life, Portal, Doom, Fable and a ton of other games because I love diving into them and exploring the secrets and not too well known lore that they hold. I like solving puzzles and putting these events into order not only feels like one, but helps me connect to the world. A lot of people use games mostly for entertainment, but I know a bunch of you guys also use them as a form of escapism. I appreciate all of you and want to thank all of you for coming back every week for new deep dives into your favourite games. I'll do my best to continue uploading lore videos around once a week, and every 4-5 to five months I'll even try to get out a timeline. There are so many games I want to give a timeline to. Fable and Doom are the two I'm looking at right now. I did ask my patrons which one they wanted me to look at first, and it seems we have a winner. If you are a patron, then you know which one won. This channel basically started as a Fable channel, and I do want to go back there at some point. I see your comments in the Half-Life videos, Fable fans. I will return at some point. 
Anyway, back to my original point. Thank you for the continued support that allows me to dive into law for my job. I am only able to do this because of you. Thanks again. As usual, I would like to thank my amazing gold tier patrons and channel members. The best resistance fighters you could ask for. Jonas, Lewis, Queen Arby, Fluffy the Dragon, Chicken Guy 791, Ruben Mendoza, Duke, Toadnut, Oren X, Azu, Karatana, AJ, Verona, Comfy, and BG Games. Thank you guys so much. What did you think of this theory and the law behind it? Would you like to see more theory videos? And do you think that the G-Man and his employers orchestrated this whole disaster? This is where our story ends. Check back next week for a new one.